Forgive me for smacking. I never could chew gum without smacking. <laughs> Good morning, Nicole Queen. Good morning, Monet. Good morning, Serena and God's Girl and Shoe Chick and everyone else. Okay, so as we are piling in, whew, when intercessors get attacked mm, mm, mm. when intercessors get attacked so let's get into it all right so so you think you're an intercessor maybe i should have said that <laughs> so you think you're an intercessor good morning frankie so here it is if you If you call yourself an intercessor, there is a level of warfare that you are signing up for. Not just for yourself, but the level of hits that you plan on taking on the behalf of the person that you are praying for. People think that because a person prays, it automatically, thank you for the hearts, thank you for sharing. Just because someone prays, they automatically think that you are an intercessor because you pray. No. Intercessory prayer or being an intercession is that you are willing to stand in the gap in between that person and whatever's attacking them. You are willing to stand in the middle, in the midst of prayer in order to be that frontliner to be able to pray for that person. You are, are willing to war in the spirit. You are willing to birth out in the spirit. See, there are so many aspects to prayer. This would be like multiple scopes. But an intercessory prayer is really, an intercessor is really an office. I'm just going to keep it real. It's the office. You got to be called to be an intercessor. Hello, intercessor. Boo. You have to be called to be an intercessor because you cannot decide today you're going to be an intercessor. Here's the fact and problem that we are having is that people don't know what it means to be an intercessor. So you are signing up to be spiritually connected to someone that you are praying for. So you know what's happening in the spirit realm, what's coming for them, breakthroughs. You have the inside information on the person. This is why so many people who are in the office of intercession become prophets or uh, flow, they flow into the prophetic so easily because you are literally um, praying on behalf of this person and God is giving you instructions on how to pray for them and you are literally getting information from God on inside information to what to break off what to do all I mean come on what to break off what to push out everything an intercessor is a midwife in the spirit. So the person you're praying for, you are called to birth them out in prayer. Um, uh, intercessors are um, frontline prayer warriors. That means whatever's coming for them, you're going to get hit first. Matter of fact, if, you are, if you're intercessoring correctly, and you're inter intercessoring, interceding correctly, then what happens is that person should not even feel what's coming after them because it stops with you okay you are the person that sees what's coming on in the pipe coming down the pipeline good bad or indifferent and you have the ability to either pray it on through or you have the ability to stop it that's why sometimes you get the wrong people who are interceding for you and they have uh uncleanness uh, going on in their spirit or they need deliverance in some area and they start feeling jealous because they see what's coming down the pipeline they can start operating in witchcraft to keep you from receiving what god has for you because again you're intercepting okay so it has to be the right people praying for you they have to have a heart of a jonathan okay they have to heart they have to love you 
Now, there's some people that really don't know you and they're called to pray for you. But if you need somebody that's like, you're my intercessor and you are uh, connected to my life, that person got to love you. Because if, if they don't love you, they'll be all jealous when you start getting breakthroughs. They'll be judgmental when you in struggle. Nobody got time for that. You need some Jonathans to be intercessors, okay? Because no matter what David did, Jonathan loved David. All right, so um, the issue is that some people are calling themselves intercessors when they're really just prayer warriors. They only pray when there's a storm. If there's not a storm, then they don't pray. If it ain't a war, then they don't pray. That's a prayer warrior. Prayer warriors don't really usher in anything unless there's a war. So if you only have a war once a year, then that's the only time prayer warriors are supposed to pray. Because they only, they're like the firemen. They only get called when there's a fire. Other than that, they holding out, waiting at the fire station. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Do whatever they want to do. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Because they're only firemen. They only get called when there's an emergency. So some people call themselves intercessors when they really just prayer warriors. Okay? If you ain't a fireman in the spirit, then you can't be no prayer warrior. <laughs> See, the office of an intercessor is all aspects of that prayer. They are dedicated their lives to all of it. That's the office. They are fluent in prayer language. They are fluent prayers. They know what to pray, when to pray. They know spiritual warfare prayers. They know healing prayers. They know uh, uh, prayers of, of abundance. They know it. That's they feel. They're intercessors. They walk in the office of prayer. Okay? This is why if you are in the office of an intercessor, you have a prophetic flow. Because you're talking to God all day. <laughs> this is why prophets have to be also called to the office of intercessor. So if you have a prophet that don't pray, then they are psychic. They go through the realms, they see, they tell, whatever they see. You know, but if they don't pray for you, they don't anything like that. They just telling you whatever, whatever. Then that's a, they operate in psychic realms. That's first and second heaven. Okay, we go prophets of God. They go straight to the throne of grace. That's third heaven and beyond. So, mm -mm. if you meet somebody that don't pray like that, every time, every time you talking to them, they available. Why are you available all, all the time? Why can't you say, well, I'm on a consecration? If you ain't consecrating and praying and fasting, what kind of prophet are you? Okay? All right. So, office of intercessory always have prophetic flow. They just do. So, you meet somebody talking about they're an intercessor, and they can't prophesy uh, a rabbit hopping down the street. <laughs> they can't prophesy nothing. You know, that's not their major gift. But they do flow. So, how are you going to be an intercessor? Now, some people are just midwives. You are mid midwives in prayer. You don't do nothing else, but you just midwifing. What does that look like and what does that mean? That means that, um, that you only birth people out. That's all you do. You, you, you are a mother in the spirit. You... You only birth people out. You are literally a, um, a spiritual womb. God bless you, Nicole. Um, you are birthing people out. That's it. You do not front line. Okay? You you don't. You don't put yourself in harm's way. Because when you are a midwife, you're helping somebody bear down and push out their anointing to push out um, whatever. You help thrust people into their anointing, into their call. You birth people out into their greater potential. So you should not be doing prayer warrior activities because if you stop birthing them out to put out a fire, this baby could breach or be stillborn at any point in time. If you jump in to the line of fire and you deal with a realm that is fragile, 
Because when you're birthing people out, they are fragile in the spirit because they're going through labor pains. And you need to be distinguishing if it's a fire or a labor pain. Because that's different in the spirit realm. See, some things happen because you're birthing. That's labor pains. It hurts. It, 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 it's painful, but you need to go through it in order to get to the other part. So there's a difference between distraction and that which is considered fires little things happening around and there's a difference between okay I know I gotta cut people off because I can't get my breakthrough until that happened I know I gotta leave my job because I can't get my break breakthrough until it happened I know I gotta do this and do that cut you know that's that's that thing right there these are labor pains and so you have to be able to go and push out that person in the spirit realm so you ain't got time to be no prayer warrior if that's what you do, you're a midwife, okay? So, the office of an intercessor is a prayer warrior, midwife, Jonathan, <laughs> gatekeeper, watchtower. <laughs> they all above. That's why they're very much the pillars of a church. So, the strength of that church based on how strong the foundation of prayer is in that church. So if you have people who are strong in, in prayer, those people who are strong in prayer, they're going to keep the church moving forward. They're going to keep the devils out the church. They're going to keep the wolves away from the pastor. They are strong. Now there... And, and and if you, if you can in your ministry have a total separate prayer group for the pastor and the leadership than for the general lay people because you just go I mean it just takes a lot to just pray for your their leadership because there's so much coming after them just simply because they're in ministry okay so you need to be praying for them totally even separate than and in the whole entire church because I'm telling you right now it's a lot. So, I didn't mean this to be like a one-on-one -on -one thing about breaking down intercession. I may have to do when intercessors get attacked, part two. But, here's the point, And this is what I really meant to talk about. Is that intercessors get attacked all the time. That's what you do. It's kind of like how people who operate in deliverance, they get attacked a lot. So, intercessors, they get attacked a lot. Because whatever is coming after that person that you're praying for is looking for you because you are blocking it from getting to that person. You are the one that take the hits. And there are seasons where you will not be able to intercede. Because even every warrior has to take time to recoup from the battle that they just came out of. So, it is best that if you're interceding for somebody, it needs to be two of you. So that if you got beat up real bad at that last war, at least somebody's still guarding the post for that other person so that you can recoup from what you've experienced, okay? Intercessors need intercessors. Because <laughs> you're so busy praying for somebody else, somebody needs to be praying and covering for you. But that's another subject. Here's the thing. Don't call yourself an intercessor when you can't even pray a cold off somebody. Don't call yourself an intercessor if you can't even get rid of your own headache. Don't call yourself an intercessor, okay? Don't volunteer to be someone's intercessor unless you've been assigned by God. If someone asks you, will you be my intercessor? You better go check with the boss, boss Jesus, to find out if that's the assignment you need to be carrying. Because this person you may love and they may be so nice. You must love them and respect them. And she, you don't know the devils that's coming for them. You don't know all the things they got birthed out. Intercessors be going through it. They be feeling your pains, your hurts. If you get sick, they be feeling in their body. Wait a minute, what's going on? Because they are so spiritually attached to you. They'll know what's going on with you. They'll know what's going on with you before your spouse know what's going on with you. They'll see it. This is a spiritual relationship. Okay? 
And if you have been the one that's being protected spiritually by this intercessor, you need to be making sure that you are constantly asking God to protect their integrity so that the spirits that's coming after you do not corrupt them and then they're praying for you to get a breakthrough gets perverted and turns into witchcraft because all of a sudden they're getting jealous and all these other issues and it, and it, it gets to be an issue there's some people that have had to be literally you had divorced the intercessor they had to cut them off they had to fire them because it just got crazy your intercessor is not your BFF. Okay? It's not, they not your BFF. And don't ask your BFF to be your intercessor. The relationship has got to change. You do not go shopping with your intercessor. Okay? Y'all don't go to the show together. Okay? This is a spiritual business relationship. Okay? I see you guys, girl. I'm trying to do something quick before work. We'll have to do something else later. But yeah, that's the situation. Uh uh. Because you got to keep this look. If we start knowing each other carnally, you coming off your post. Okay? Because I need to know you in the spirit. This got to be a totally spiritual conversation. To to totally totally spiritual this needs to be totally spiritual relationship there needs to be a respect when y'all talk holy holy spirit got to be present not saying you can't you know chit chat every once in a while but let's keep it professional just keeping it real because you need to make sure that your relationship is not perverted it has to be covered in a certain way so the relationship changes. A real intercessor, a real, real, real intercessor is just doing that. Now, what if your armor bearer is your intercessor? Okay. All right. Make sure they can handle it. Make sure they can handle it. Because there's some, some boundaries there. some issues there. It's a lot there. Okay. So make sure they can handle it. Because if they get mad at you and they have direct connect to you and they get mad at you, they can shut up the heavens simply because you allowed them to be in that role. I'm just saying. All right. The next thing I want to say when... I, did I ever even talk about when intercessors get attacked? <laughs> I think this is so you want to be an intercessor. <laughs> I titled it completely wrong. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Dom. Um, back to my point, and I think it's my last point before I go today, and then we'll just have to do a part two another time. So, like when intercessors get attacked, make sure that your level of faith is balanced with the level of warfare. That's on the life of the person that you're interceding. So, if your faith is at a three and their warfare is at a ten, you're going to get clobbered. Bottom line, you're going to get so jacked up. It's not funny, but I see it all day. I see it all day. You're going to get clobbered, messed up, jacked up. You gonna want to quit. Do you know how many intercessors resigned from their position because they were not ready? I want to pray for the man and woman of God. I'm like, is you weak? Sorry, I got ghetto. Are you weak? <laughs> are you too weak for this position? Be honest. If you can't handle your own demons, why are you signing up for theirs? Hello? Are you hearing God? What are you doing? <sighs> So if you weak, all you can do is just pray to the Lord. Lord, just touch the man and woman of God. Amen. And let's keep it. Just, just keep it playing. Just, just keep it playing. Don't be trying to go in deep, dark places so the demons coming after, coming after them, just destroy all time. You all jacked up. I mean, when I say jacked up, blind, crippled, and crazy jacked up. Talking about, I don't know why this is happening to me. 
Because you didn't pray for them and you weren't ready. I'm not trying to make you feel bad if you still growing in your faith. I'm just saying we prophesy according to our level of faith. The prophet, to, to prophesy means to preach and to proclaim. So when you're praying, you're proclaiming, you're declaring. You know what I'm saying? So you can only proclaim and declare according to your faith. So if you're at a three on the faith bar, then your proclamation is on the three. So if the man woman God asks you, which they need to pray and ask God and stuff, people, some people be randomly asking people. I don't know. But if they ask you, you know, you want to be my intercessor, you gotta go and pray. And look, I mean, literally watch each other for a minute if you can, because the integrity level needs to be, <laughs> you know, if you hear in the scene from the man and woman God and they just out there clowning, it may be a waste of time. Seriously, <laughs> because you sitting here taking hits off somebody that's just readily disobedient. They need, they need a prayer warrior, not an intercessor. <laughs> Be like, look, we just need to get you saved because you done strayed away and I'm wasting all my good intercessory juices. <laughs> look, intercessory juices on somebody who, who is just completely disobedient. Okay? Oh, look at you. <laughs> block, 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 been straight on fleek. So, anyway. Yeah, so we here just wasting away on people that just totally got reprobate minds. No, no, no. No, they need to go back to Salvation 101. Just pray to you to get saved. And then, Lord, just keep your hand on them and pray you to get saved. And that's it. And then after you get saved, we start praying for the destiny and all that. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> because if you're praying for people's destiny to come to pass, they ain't got to get saved for it. How people getting blessed and they don't even have to love Jesus? That's another service, but but some some people be praying something crazy. I don't, I don't understand. So salvation should be the <laughs> the first prayer. I'm gonna pray you get saved, and now that you get saved, God will just bless you and give you abundance. That's that's what you do first. So okay, I got to go. I gotta go to work. Obviously, you guys have tons of questions on intercessory prayer, so we'll have to do a part two. I love y'all. God bless you. Bless you, Nicole. Bless everybody on the soap. Love y'all. Gotta roll. Gotta go to work. Peace. Have a great day.